Lesson 12.1, I'm going to do a few extra examples here to help you guys get started. All right, so it says find the product and list all excluded values. So let's start with this one. The first thing we need to do is factor. So I can rewrite 35 as negative 7 times 5 and then times x times y. And then I've got 18. Let's rewrite that as 3 times 6. They need to break down 6 down a little bit more, but we'll just leave it as 6 for now and see what happens. All right, and then z is, or z squared is z times z. All right, so 15 is 3 times 5, and then x times x times y. And then 24, you can rewrite that in several different ways, um, 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, 4 and 6. Since we have a 6 here, I'm going to go with 4 and 6. So 4 and 6 times z. Now, anything that can reduce, we're going to cancel. So I'm going to cancel my 5s. There's an x that can be canceled. There's a y that can be canceled. There's a z. There's 6s. There's 3s. And then I believe that's all. So I'm left with negative 7z over 4x. And it says make sure you include excluded values. So because I have an x, a y, and a z in the denominator, and these are products, meaning multiplication, that means none of these can equal 0. So this is simplified to this expression here, and these are your excluded values, which means your domain um, cannot have these values in it. Okay? All right, let's look at the next one here. So if we look at the numerator of the first expression, let's see if we can rewrite this. So we're going to have x times x. Well, it multiplies to give me 36 and adds to give me 12. So 6 and 6 come to mind. I'm going to add both of those. All right, then I have a sum of cubes. Remember, a sum of cubes can be factored as a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared. If you need to review that, please do so. All right, so what would our a and b be? A, in this case, would be x. B would be 6, because 6 cubed is 216. All right, and it doesn't hurt to know a few of your perfect cubes. Um, I don't know a lot of them, but the first few, for sure, you should recognize. All right, so when I factor this as a perfect cube, I'm going to factor this as a plus b, or x plus 6. And then I'm going to have a squared, which is, in this case, x squared. And then I'm going to have minus ab, so minus 6x. And then plus b squared. The last one's always plus because when you square a number, it's always positive. So 6 squared is 36. All right. Now I'm going to factor this as a perfect cubed as well. But this is a difference of perfect cubes where this was a sum of different cubes. So it's slightly different. I'm going to start with x minus 6 because it's a difference. And then I'm still going to have x squared. But now I'm going to have plus ab, which is plus 6x, and then plus 36. So similar, but just a little bit different. All right, difference of squares. Again, same binomial, different sign in the middle. So I'm going to have x plus 6 and x minus 6. And then we'll look and see what we can reduce. So we've got an x plus 6 here. We've got an x plus 6 here. x minus 6 here. And so we're left with x squared plus 6x plus 36 over x squared minus 6x plus 36. All right, and we want to know what our excluded values are. They're going to come from the denominator. So x cannot be 6 or negative 6. 
because this would be 6 minus 6 is 0. Negative 6 plus 6 is 0 cancels out. If you graph this, you will see that it probably, most of the time when it's perfect cube, that part is going to be not factorable. So let's see if it crosses the x. I doubt it does. So we're going to go y equals, and we're going to graph x squared um, minus 6x plus 36. All right, let's change my window a bit so maybe I can see it. Uh, might as well go ahead and change all of them. Let's see. Negative 25. Let's go 25. Not sure this is big enough. I probably need to go out past. Let's do 50. Change my mind. I'm going to make sure we go out far enough where we can see it all. All right. I'm going to hit graph. And now we can see that here is the parabola. It does not cross the x, which means it does not affect the domain. This would have imaginary solutions if we were just trying to graph just this quadratic. So the only two excluded values would be these two here. All right. Let's look at some division problem. So it says find each quotient, remember quotient means division, and list all excluded values. All right, so there's one extra step when dividing. So we're going to have 5xy over, I'm going to rewrite 8 as 2 times 4 times z times z, and now we're going to change our division to multiplication. So we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So we just flip this, put 4z on top, and I'm going to have x times x times y. And you don't have to divide these out or write these out long ways, but a lot of times it'll help students know that like when I cancel one x here, I only cancel one x here. Cancel a 4, cancel a z, and I'm left with 5 over 2xz. The order doesn't matter. I usually just write these in alphabetical order. All right, excluded values comes from my variables. X, Y, Z are all in the denominator here. Doesn't matter if it's from the original problem or the finished product. If there's a variable in the denominator, it could cause an excluded value. So X, Y, and Z cannot be zero or this would be undefined. All right, moving on to the next one. All right, so we have a perfect, or we have a difference of cubes. Perfect cube minus a perfect cube. Remember, 3 cubed is 27. So I'm going to rewrite this as a difference of cubes again. I'm going to have A minus B, which is, in this case, X minus 3. And then I'm going to have X squared minus AB, which would be minus 3X and then plus b squared, which is 3 squared, or 9. All right, on the bottom, I can factor out my greatest common factor first, which is a 3. I'm left with x squared minus 24x plus 45. And then I'm going to multiply by, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to have on top x plus 5 and x minus 5 because this is a difference of perfect squares again. 25 is a perfect square and x squared is a perfect square. Difference of squares, same binomial, different sign in the middle. On the bottom, I'm going to factor this as x times x. Oh, what well, multiplies to give me 9 and adds to give me 3. That would be nothing. So this one will not factor. So we're going to put this back in here like it is. So this is going to be x squared plus 3x plus 9. That will not reduce. 
And now I need to see if this will factor further. All right, so what multiplies to give me 45? Oh, wait a minute. I didn't take, I took three out of my first term and not my other two terms. Let me go back to here. All right, sorry about that, guys. All right, three comes out of three x squared three times and leaves x squared. Three goes into negative 24, negative eight times. And the x is still there because I didn't pull it out. And then three goes into 45, three goes into four one time, one left over. So three goes into 15 five times. All right, so now I need to see if I can factor this further. So let's see if we have three times what multiplies to give me 15 and adds to give me 8. That would be 5 and 3. I need a plus when I multiply, so same signs. Two negatives give me a negative 8 when I add. So I just rewrote this expression as further factored form here. All right, now let's see what will cancel. All right, so I did factor this incorrectly here. I've got a minus, this should be a plus. All right, so when you have a difference of cubes, you've got a cubed minus b cubed. That equals a minus b times a squared plus a b plus b squared. All right, so that middle sign right there, I just had that wrong, so that should be a plus. Now, when I do that, I can see that this and this cancel. The fact that those almost match, but they didn't, that's what made me reevaluate to see if I had factored that correctly. Um, because sometimes you just make a little mistake like that and you can easily fix it. All right, so now crossing everything out, I'm going to have x plus 5 over 3 is the only thing left in the denominator. Um, but my excluded values come from all of these factors. So it comes from the factors from, again, the beginning, the middle, or the end. So if there's a factor anytime in the expression from the original problem to the finished product, it could create a restricted value. So um, 5 minus 5 is zero, so I know that's going to be zero. And I know three minus three, so I know three is going to be a restricted value. But if I go back up here, I can see that originally I had this difference of squares. So I had x plus five and x minus five would be on the bottom in the original problem. So I also have to put negative five as a restricted value. All right, so hopefully that helps. If you have any questions on any of these examples, please let me know.